Thanks, Wes. And last night, Governor John D. Young Jr. gave his State of the Territory address. News Channel 8's Lee Carl was there, and he's now bringing us up to speed on those remarks. Well, it was a, a once again a deja vu almost for the governor of the Virgin Islands delivering his State of the Territory address at the Earl B. Otley Legislative Hall. But some elected officials approved of Governor John D. Young's State of the Address on Monday night. Some criticized it. Almost all recognized that it was about the coming together to weather the current economic storm. Delegate Donna Christensen couldn't attend, but she said that uh, she tried to show progress, or at least the governor tried to show progress, on the things he had set out to do, like building the Diageo Distillery, rum promotions, U.S. Interior Department, and the like. We'll get to that a little later. But the main, uh, I guess, thrust of his speech was, as he opened it, was the state of the territory is in difficult times ahead, but the storm will pass. Uh, what's that old phrase used to cautiously optimistic? Here's how he opened the State of the Territory Address. As I stand before you tonight, I must report that the state of our territory, like the state of our nation, and much like our world, matches the state of our nation's new leader. For all of us, the people of the Virgin Islands, share deep concern for our immediate future, marked at the same time by a great, no, a greater, determination to take any and all reasonable actions to alleviate the suffering of our people. Governor said we come together here tonight at a time of grave uncertainty and economic distress and of course then he moved into some of the areas. He, over the past year the government officials have tried to prepare for this kind of uh, breaking storm. They worked with Delegate Donna Christensen to strengthen the territory's ties with the national leaders, submitted $700 million worth of capital projects, and the officials are trying to solidify the local economic development tax incentive program. Of course, the main thing he talked about was property taxes and where we are with property taxes at this time. He also talked about what he called a residue of wrongdoing, and uh, he's kind of pinpointing the some of the corruption in the, in the government and also at the Snyder Regional Medical Center. The residue of wrong drinking, doing, he said, has been uncovered and will be with us for some time. Speaking in his first state of territory address about the need to shore up some squabbles between government agencies, he said that's been taken care of. And here are some more of the items he pinpointed in the state of the territory address. President Obama and the Congress are moving forward with an economic stimulus package in the range of $825 billion, which is important for job creation and sustaining economic activity through this recession. I have submitted to the President a package of projects of the central government and the authorities that can total over $700 million, which can be shovel-ready and provide jobs across our territory. The governor talked about capital projects, too, uh, mainly over in St. Croix, the William and Punch Development, Coastal Zone, Williams Delight Housing Community, on St. Thomas, the State Duno Affordable Housing Development, construction of a regional library and records, completion of the Capone Vistas, Calabash Boom in St. John. Uh, the capital investment will not come without a price for each of us, he said. He also talked about traffic at Mandela Circle and Red Hook. And indeed, the sacrifices and belt tightening, the governor said, would come at every level over the next year. But the commitment of local residents and government leaders to make things better must prevail. As he wrapped up his State of the Territory address, he said uh, he would like to quote a poet. A poet wrote many centuries ago, rings more true than ever, that no man is an island unto himself, and neither are our islands islands unto themselves. We need each other. In St. Thomas, Lee Carl for News Channel 8. Stay with us on News Channel 8. We have more news after the break. Welcome back. Well, the inauguration of Barack Obama, our 44th president, was not so long ago. Now returning are the bands from the territory. Many of the bands did very well at the inauguration and won some awards. News Channel 8's Lee Carl caught up with the returning band members from our territory. Here we go. <laughs> This baggage control area here was packed with the marching stars, the marching band 
from the Virgin Islands as he arrived. I got a chance to speak to many of the people directly involved, and I want you to see that in just a moment. Uh, Georgia Francis coming on another plane following this as they came back triumphantly from the inauguration, pre-inauguration activities in Leesburg, Virginia, the Martin Luther King March of, and the Lincoln Memorial. The band, of course, comprising all the youngsters from the various islands here, and they were absolutely proud. I saw some of the trophies, we saw the young people, smiles on their faces, and we got a chance to speak to some of the principals in Boston. Enjoy it. Yeah, What's your name? Nicholas, me and I do. Yeah. You enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. You're awesome. Jakim Grant. Yeah, where are you from? Um, St. Thomas. What's that group you have? Um, the percussion and some we got outstanding percussion in the competition that we participated oh, in. What were you playing? The bells, the telephone. Yeah. Massage. Yeah, and where are you from? St. Thomas. St. Thomas, what did you play? Flute. Flute? And how about this lady right here, right? What's your name? I'm Denisha Brooks. I also play the flute. You play flute? This is Ian Williams. Mr. Williams. What did you play or you do? No, uh, three of my sons was part of the uh, marching band. What did you think of it? Was it good? Oh, it, it, it was something else to be all. I, I think that this was the best performance that I've ever seen in my life, you know. And um, the kids really had a good time despite the cold. After they got warmed up, you know, it was like no stopping them. And, um, it was a great experience. Um, president of the CHS Bamboo Organization. Well, we went and we accomplished the tasks that we went to do. Uh, we did very well in the band's competition. We bring back a lot of first place trophy and plaques. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, we really thank the whole Virgin Islands community for supporting us with the fi financial benefits and the financial fundraisers that we had. And we also would like to thank the government for helping us. And we just went and did what we had to do and came back. Uh, I think it was definitely a learning experience for these kids. Uh, this would be my second trip because I went uh, at 93 with a VI March 100. And it, it's uh, a whole lot different, I think. We had a lot of things to do, however, with a lot of complications with the Boston and stuff like that. But I think the kids overall did an excellent job. We came back with 12 trophies. We pretty much sweeped it out. What is your title with the group? You know, I am one of the directors. What I did, I dealt specifically with music. So all the music pretty much came through me. And Mr. Carwood is who did the assistance of with jazz band. So Mr. Carwood is over jazz band. And myself and a couple other, uh, my, my colleagues, uh, Ms. Janelle Saru, and like Mr. Malvin Gum, Mr. Niels Goodens, they helped us out a lot. But uh, I did most of the music with concert band, percussion ensemble, and marching band. Hi. Good evening. Back from the cold. Back from the cold. Glad to be back from the cold. The numbers are now flipped from 28 to 82. How was it? A little bit exhausting, but I mean, uh, fulfilling. And a lot of things really worked out well with respect to the competition and the performance for the Martin Luther King Parade in Leesburg, Virginia.